Jacob, welcome back to the show. Yeah, um, good day, Tim. It's uh, it's great to be back for another week. Uh, Apologise for the change of scenery around here. We just had to make some adjustments. Uh, uh, Tim, I understand that you're at Liberty Fest, and uh, you know I've had my birthday today, so it's been a big day. But certainly, uh, nothing more than I look forward to uh, during a day than doing this podcast, Tim. Uh, we're doing this in, uh, for, for those who uh, can't see, we're doing this in the, the dead of night because this is the only time that we're uh, both available because, well, I'm not at Liberty Fest yet, but uh, on my way and the, the show must go on. So if we have to stay up, then so be it. Well, that's it. Um, Vegas never sleeps and uh, the Unshackled also uh, never sleeps. We're always working behind the scenes. Uh, to give you the inside information that you need. As a good segue, let's hope that the our power uh, stays on because it's uh, energy uh, has dominated the political discussion in Australia this week where uh, the Turnbull government, they've been uh, sitting... Sorry, on... Tim, there's a blackout. There's, there's a blackout, Tim. I, I don't think we can continue the show. I can, st I can still hear you, oh, so... The lights are back on. There we go. I'm not sure if our viewer, uh, if our listeners will be able to get that joke. <laughs> well, let's let's hope so. Uh, so the the lights are on for the the time being. So the Turnbull government they've been sitting on the Finkel climate report for a number of months now. That now there were news reports at the beginning of the week suggesting that the government is set to dump its key recommendation, which is a a clean energy target, which is, it's somehow different from a renewable energy target. Well, I think that as, uh, as my understanding goes and, and prior discussions that uh, I've had with you and a few other people, um, is that it is uh, basically the renewable energies target that encompasses uh, clean coal and maybe some other things. I definitely hear uh, prominent commentators such as Mark Latham uh, saying that nuclear is on the table. I hear prominent conservatives such as Senator Cory Bernardi saying that nuclear is on the table. So this begs the question uh, whether the clean energy or the renewable energy will encompass uh, both uh, things such as maybe fracking or nuclear or, or clean coal, just basically economically viable and sensible options. Um, and you, we obviously have seen since the, the, the banks have stopped lending uh, for people to expand into the coal sector because, you know, it's, it's a fancy, it's, it's a cute little thing to do uh, for the, the shareholders who are, you know, ethically and morally superior to everyone and who have a great grasp of the economics. I think that that in a sign as well uh, is, is a great sign that... Um, that Turnbull and the team are actually progressing and doing something uh, on this issue and the obviously the summer of blackouts we we're expecting to come and uh, it will be interesting to see how this energy debate will both affect the Queensland and the South Australian uh, elections as well. Uh, it's, I know that Turnbull, like he's got a reputation as being a climate warrior because back in 2009 when he lost the leadership he declared he wouldn't lead a party that was uh, as committed to climate change as he was. Uh, I, I'm not sure if he's had a genuine change of heart on climate change or whether you know he was just going with the times but he definitely seems to be you know w waking up to the fact that we have got an energy crisis here and s something needs to be done to you know, make sure that we've got uh, reliable power. I have, conservatives have been saying that oh, Turnbull's been, you know, too slow to uh, act on uh, you know, this uh, Finkel climate report. Well, he has been dealing with, uh, you know, other policy matters such as the, the plebiscite, for example, and uh, a lot of uh, conservatives have been saying this is because of, you know, Tony Abbott's uh, successful lobbying because he just gave a speech in, in London to a Climate Skeptic Institute where he basically reaffirmed his 
original position, which was, I don't think he actually said it again, but, you know, climate change is crap. Uh, he also said that, you know, global warming, you know, it actually could be, you know, quite beneficial, which, which is true. I mean, uh, the Earth has historically done well when it's uh, warmer, and uh, obviously, the, you know, we're seeing the consequences of these, uh, you know, cl uh, climate policies, which he did oversee when he was um, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, yes, uh, I think that that Abbott still holds a large sway on the conservative uh, right faction of the Liberal Party, and I think that Turnbull uh, is more pragmatic potentially than Abbott is on this issue because uh, we will be unable to completely scrap a clean energy or renewable energies target with the current mentality uh, of both. Uh, of people on both uh, sides of the aisle of the House of Representatives and, and in both the Senate, I think that that's impossible. And I think that certainly Turnbull is being a lot more pragmatic because he realises that uh, he has to uh, appease, uh, I guess, uh, both sides of the aisle. He says that, yes, we can deliver a cleaner, a more renewable form of energy, although I really hate government interference in the private sector, it's disgusting, but still, uh, you know, it's, yeah, this heavy-handed economics from Turnbull, uh, government intervention, I'm, I'm not liking it, but still, it's being a bit more pragmatic. It's better than uh, having a 100% renewable energy target, which, which Turnbull actually proposed uh, once. So, I think that if, if you're saying that, uh, say, as a, as a Liberal Party member, that, hey, w we can't really fight this, this cultural, um, you know, s m movement, I guess, or this left-wing uh, secularist religion of this climate alarmism, we actually can't, you know, beat it, we aren't strong enough to, uh, shall we just stab the beast uh, uh, with a spear in his back and, and get him down and then make a better change. And I think that certainly this clean energy target that embraces potentially things like clean coal uh, and nuclear and maybe even fracking uh, is, is certainly a good uh, step forward, both economically, you know, environmentally and so forth. Oh, yeah, the, that's the reason why Finkel rebranded the renewable energy target to clean energy so it could encompass, you know, non-renewables like nuclear and clean coal, but it's still a government-enforced target. I mean, it's called a clean a clean energy target. It's it's still, you know, forcing consumers to, you know, purchase more expensive and, as we have learned, more uh, un, unreliable power. And it's 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 obviously like this was supposed to be the the next phase of the you know shift to you know renewable energy. So it's it's good that you know the Turnbull government is now uh, putting putting a break a break on it and saying you know we're not going any further than uh, you know the current uh, targets that were set, which at least you know things aren't going to to get any worse. But then of course there's also the state renewable energy target. But uh, yeah, they're also, like Turnbull's also, yeah, as you mentioned, hamstrung by the Senate as well. And uh, you mentioned it briefly before these, uh, you know, of the corp uh, corporations, the private companies, I mean, they're, they've been just as bad as government with, you know, obviously the big banks not funding uh, coal, you know, projects. And then you have, you know, AGL with their advertising campaign saying, you know, we're going to get out of coal. I mean, it seems that the only way we can solve this uh, problem that government intervention caused is to intervene again. Mm. Well, Tim, interesting point you make about AGL. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to have their cake essentially and eat it. What they're doing is they're saying, coal is bad, coal is awful, we don't like coal. But at the same time, they're selling all this coal to Japan and India. Uh, and they're using that to fire their dirty coal power stations that, that essentially probably has, uh, in India's case, probably the technology uh, hasn't developed much in some impoverished provinces uh, since the day of, of the imperial, uh, you know, British Empire. Um, and they're just polluting cities 
you know, soot going everywhere on people's collars, you know, thick um, smog, you know, really terrible for people. Um, they prefer, you know, to ship it over there and not to have these self-righteous kind of activists giving them a hard time and affecting their share prices. Um, but they, they, but the thing is, they don't want to burn the coal here in Australia, where we have the most, you know, innovative uh, coal power stations uh, simply around the world. Uh, if you look at, we've got scrubbers, you know, it's clean. If you if you actually look at the new power stations, it's just essentially hot air that goes out the top uh, and a bit of CO2. And uh, in Japan, they they're still building. They're actually starting to build new uh, coal power sta uh, stations, clean energy. Russia's doing it as well. And simply, if, if we're not doing this, uh, our energy prices are going to go up. We're going to have the highest energy prices in the world. We're going to have the highest wages in the world. And simply, in a globalised economy, we are not going to be able to compete and we're going to fall behind and we're going to be yesterday's news. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.